Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of November 21st, 2025. Let's start off talking about editing tempo and time signature. If you have your transport bar visible at the bottom of Cubase, there's an area that shows the tempo. And right next to that is this little button that actually turns the tempo track on or off. Right now, mine is on. That's why it's lit up. If I turn it off, now Cubase has one tempo throughout the whole project. I can spin it with my mouse to change it. If I turn that button back on, now Cubase has the option to have multiple tempos and your project can change tempo as it moves along. If you hold control, double click on this button, then you open up this tempo track editor. You can see a line that goes along here. And if you go up to the top and change the tempo, and you can see that line actually change. And if you wanted to, you could come down here and click on it, making points and changing the tempo by adding different ramps and or steps. In the same editor is a similar button like you have on your transport. If you come up to the upper left and you can turn this tempo track back off. And now you have two lines, one that shows the ramps and one that shows the static tempo that now controls the project. You can no longer edit the tempo when the tempo track is off. It's only here for visual. Along with being able to change your tempos, at the very top, you could draw in time signatures and either click on the one that's here or you can use your pencil tool and draw in other ones if you need them. Something you want to be aware of on every track, and it may be on the track controls, but if it's not visible there, it's up in the inspector. It's this little button right now is lit up showing a note. This allows you to toggle the time base. If it's on, that's what's called musical mode. If it's off, it shows a little clock. That's what's known as linear mode. If you want the parts in your project to follow your tempo changes, then you want to keep this musical mode on. And then some other ways to open up this tempo track and go up to your project menu, come down to where it says tempo track. And then you have the option to hit tempo track editor. And then if you haven't changed your shortcut keys, you can also hit control and T and that brings it up as well. With Cubase 15, we got the option to explode the chords back. If you want to perform that function, take a MIDI part, select it, open it up in the score editor, come up to the score menu, down to functions and then explode. You have numerous options here. All of these are explained in the digital audio manual, but the typical operation is choose to new tracks, decide if you want to preserve the original track or not, choose the number of destination tracks. I prefer this bass to lowest note option and then hit OK. Now all your voicings have been split into individual tracks, which typically I move these onto string parts. That's a great option for that. The good news is it is now natively available again in Cubase 15. All right, let's talk about rendering audio and MIDI. At any time in your project, you can take a MIDI or an audio part and render it off to a new audio part. This can be done either as a track or you can select the individual part. And in many cases, you can even select a small section within your part. All of these are slightly different in how they behave. Let's look at the track. If I take this track and I select it, I go up to edit, choose the option to render in place, and I'm given two choices. Do I want to go ahead with the current settings or do I want to change my render settings? Let's look at the render settings. We have all kinds of options here to choose from. If we take the defaults that are already here and hit render in a few seconds, we now have an audio part that's replaced that MIDI part. If I control Z out of this, keeping our track selected and going back to edit, render in place and our render settings, we look down in this area that says source track settings and click on this drop down. You can see that we have all kinds of different options here. How we want to mute the track, disable it, or any number of things. But if I cancel this, instead actually choose the event. When I go to my render settings, come back down to this drop down. Now I only have a couple of choices. In this case, I can mute it or leave the events unchanged. So you want to be aware that as you're doing your rendering, are you doing it at the track level or are you doing it at the event level? Because you're going to get a different result depending on what you selected. If I take this part and I cut it up a little bit and separate these parts, if I stay at the track level and come back to edit, do my render settings, at the very top I have this mode drop down. And I can choose do everything as one event, as block events, or as separate events. If I choose as one event and then do the render, all three of those little events are now combined. And there's no empty spaces. If I come back and do the same thing, and instead I go up and say do this as separate events and render it, then all my events are exactly as they were with MIDI parts, but now they are audio and still retain the separation between the different parts. Knowing how to use all these different features, whether it's editing the tempo and the time signature, or explode the chords, or rendering our audio and MIDI, 
The better we are at performing these different functions, the easier and quicker it is to reach whatever creative options that we're going for. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.